Jewy, hi. I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but um, let me know in an email uh, because I hate butchering people's names, even though I do it all the time. So thanks for sending this in. This uh, this animation looks really, really, really good. Um, this, these ones always make me nervous because um, I uh, I want to be able to give you something constructive to work with. But when I'm like, you know, every once in a while an animation rolls in like this and I'm just like, wow, this is very good. So thank you for sending in the notes uh, for the things that you were hoping to get better at um, because that helps me kind of focus the beam a little bit. Um, it makes me feel a little bit more like I'm going to be able to give you something that's going to be helpful to you. So let's play it a couple times and then uh, we will talk about it. So yeah, short but very, very sweet. This is uh, really fun to watch. I'm going to turn off the volume uh, for the rest of the review here so that I don't drive everybody crazy, um, including myself. But I, I think, you know, like... It's just really good. Like, I love how fast it is. It's got a very Capcom feel to it. Um, you know, I feel like I'm watching something right out of, like, uh, Devil May Cry. Um, your main points, the thing that you wanted specifically help with, um, or help with specifically, was the fact that you wanted her to feel more cruel. Um, I think that was just, I don't I guess, it's just what you were going for. And you don't really feel like it was coming off in the animation. Let me just read it, the comment here. Make sure that I have it right. Yeah, so you said, um, let me, you said, uh, let's see, let me turn the mic so I can, you can hear what I'm saying here. Um, yeah, so things, I'd, things that you didn't think you did very well. Let me just read the whole thing. Uh, the, the theme of this practice is Swordmaster. Um, when I use this model to animate, I was thinking about how to design attacks to fit the model's character and how to express emotion that I want to express for this practice. Things I, I think I did well are timing of the first three hits are great. And, um, the uh, flash of red on the final move is really great. I agree with all of that. Things I didn't do very well are uh, expressing an emotion of a fast, cruel, and cold feeling. But I think currently it's not, you think it's not currently enough. The first three hits are okay, but the last two hits are not decisive enough, um, and the poses aren't looking as good as you would like. Apparently, as well. So what you the device you want is how to express fast, cruel, and cold um, in the characterization, um, and how how to improve the the hit combo to express her character. So. Um, so it sounds like that's the main thing is how can you take something like this and add a whole other layer, uh, uh, you know, to, to communicate a whole other layer of, of personality or characterization, um, on, on this character. And I think there's many ways of doing it. Uh, I, my, my first gut instinct here is that I noticed that there are, are like literally huge missed opportunities on the first pose and the last pose. These are like idol like poses and in, in most games that's where most of the personality shines through is in the idols as you can see here the first pose very default <clears throat> there's nothing fancy or there's, there's just nothing being communicated other than just cool heroic looking pose there's no personality no emotion at all and you'll notice that of course the final pose is very similar i don't know if it's exactly the same pose i think it's not it's close though no it's not because <clears throat> she's got the sword in a completely different hand um, which leads me to maybe another, another thing that'd be kind of great, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but this pose is very, very stiff. It's almost like an A pose. You could be doing something amazing with this. In my opinion, I think that that's the, the, the big, the most obvious thing that you could do is use those poses to your advantage. And just to double back on what I was saying a minute ago, um, you know, if you're going to be, I always like it when game animators, put stuff on their reel that I feel like could get, you know, put right into a game. Um, and I think it'd be nice to make sure that she starts and ends in the same idle pose. Cause how you like, technically, how would her sword get back in the other hand, for instance? Um, and I mean, I, maybe that's unfair. Maybe that's unfair that I'm saying this cause maybe this is not for a video game. So, uh, but it just feels a lot like a kind of a three, like a kind of a, a multiple hit combo from a video game. So it's giving me those strong vibes. If it's, if that's true, I think it'd be worth the effort to try to format, um, the, all the things in here to make it feel like, you know, it could be used literally in a game. If people wanted to cut that up and put it in a kind of a, a multi, multi combo or multi hit combo. 
And um, and yeah, and while you're while you're making that idol, it's nice to, if we can try to add a little bit of personality to it. And I think the the key thing is for you to do is ask yourself, you know, what does it mean to be cruel, you know, and cold. I think um, you need to find you. I, I, you're going to have to probably go on a bit of an exploration looking for um, references in places like comic books, movies, try to get like something that feels like it, it, it gives you that feeling because I mean, there's lots of ways of going with cruel and cold. Sometimes just having someone a little bit more, um, you know, less straight and heroic and some somehow a little bit more twisted and cruel with a bit more of a hunch with their, you know, fingers that are kind of, you know, curled, uh, you, you know, it might be a little bit on the nose, uh, but uh, that's a good way to go. And um, um, yeah, just try some things. Try some poses in here that you feel like might communicate a little bit more her personality. What else did I see here? So um, yeah, so my first point here was to, you know, just to standardize things to make it feel more like it would fit right into the game. Uh, it's not just the poses at the beginning and the end. I also noticed that the timing is a little bit kind of all over the place. I, if it was, if you're really trying to do a multi-hit combo... Um, it's nice to have it feel like there's a rhythm to it and a rhythm by like how many frames after the button press does it take to actually land a blow to try to standardize that a little bit is usually a nice, especially for the first attacks. The last one can be a little bit longer because the idea being that it's a bigger, more powerful attack, um, having a little bit more time to build that and also add a little bit of that risk versus reward, um, to that final blow as far as the gameplay mechanics are concerned, it's often what you'll see. You usually have, you know, anywhere between five and 10 frames of a wait, you know, after hitting the button to attack for the, for the you know, initial attacks. Then that final attack can go, you know, definitely often past 10 if necessary. So that'd be another nice thing to consider here. I know it's not really what you were asking help for, but I, I, I would be remiss to not mention it. Um, so let's go through my points on the specific frame. So this pose here, okay, I already mentioned this, doesn't commute anything other than just I'm a default pose. So, you know, spend some time coming up with something, you know, and it doesn't just have to be a pose. It could be like, you know, an actual idol. Let her, let the character breathe for a little while before she does this, this animation. Um, you could just be sitting there doing an idol, maybe even a break idol. Um, break idol being something that like kind of breaks up the idol a little bit. So it's not just the same repeating breathing Im um, animation. You know, you could do something there that would be pretty interesting. Um, what else could she maybe? Yeah. So this, this, this cool, I really like this strike a lot. It's very cool. Uh, she 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 slams this blade directly into the the block, which I guess would normally be some enemy. Um, but you know she's she sits there for a while. If you watch it, well, you could maybe even extend that a little bit, to be honest. But maybe there's enough room in there for another beat, especially if you add another little bit of time. Maybe she like she cranks it in there, and then maybe she twists the blade. You know, doing little things like this are kind of, you know, what I think about when I think of someone attacking in a cruel way. You know, watch any movie where there's sword play where you see a lot of cruel stuff. A good example is um, there's a movie or a, a, a series on Apple right now, Apple TV called C. Um, and um, it's got, I always forget his name, the guy, Jason Momoa. And his character fights dirty and cruel. Like it's crazy. Some of the stuff that he does, it's painful. So uh, that could be an example of a reference that you go, you, you know, you go to to take, take a look at what kind of things they're doing to portray cruel. Um, and uh, because right now she's being very surgical with these attacks. This is the only moment where it feels a little more personal because she just kind of digs that blade into the, into the block. I think she could do something different, uh, a little bit more extended, like a twist of the blade, uh, which is like adding insult to injury. Um, you know, maybe that's the way she pulls it out of the block that might be able to sell how cruel she's being. Maybe, maybe she's going out of her way to make a bigger hole on the exit of the sword. You know, these are things that could be considered. The uh, next point here was it would be nice that if the blade wasn't floating around. If I scrub through around here, you'll notice that the blade just kind of floats doesn't really feel like it's embedded in anything. So it, you, I, it loses that that tactile feeling of the blade being in something. And so it will, even if you do this the spin, it might just not really feel punishing because it's kind of look floaty and not really buying the fact that it's embedded into anything. Um, and, you know, as, that, as, as she does a twist, if you were to add that in, another little spray of blood could really help sell the extra, the extra pain that she's, she's delivering onto her enemy here. Um, Next one here is, um, 
Yeah, it would be nice to have a proper launch here. And what do I mean by that? Um, if you take a look, I mean, the physics are, the body mechanics are quite good all the way through. I, I went step by step and, or sorry, frame by frame and really took a good look at it. This is the only part you really cheat and there's no real need to. I don't understand how she goes in from a crouch pose like this. The only foot that's in a position to be able to launch is here. And it is completely ready to launch. This, this, this foot is all just bent and ready to, 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 to take off. But instead of pushing, she just sort of launches like as if she's magically skating forward. And I don't really see any evidence of how she's able to do that. There's, you know, no magical sort of element to this. There's no jet pack. There's nothing. It's just her sliding forward where you could have just as easily, you know, I drew a little picture here where she's like literally pushing off of that leg to me would be a much more interesting, it would call, create a much more interesting pose as well. Rather than this pose here, um, you'd have a much more dynamic, um, asymmetrical pose. So I would seriously consider this because it's going to make that that whole the whole moment of, of kicking away or pushing away all, feel all that much more believable, where right now it just feels like, I mean, you're getting away with it because it's so fast, but there's just no there's no need to cheat, I don't think. You, you, got, you got everything is just sitting there waiting to be done. That foot is in a perfect... That foot slash leg is in a perfect location and position, like slash pose, to be able to sell that push off. Um, this could be a much better silhouette. Um, the problem with the silhouette is there's too many things kind of falling on top of one another. Um, I like this blade crossing it through here, but the, the the arm is kind of overlapping that blade, and then this hand sticking out of her head is definitely not ideal. You know, maybe you want something like a hand out here, like this. Um, you know, maybe, maybe the other hand is sort of down here like this. So you get this kind of cool line that runs through, um, right now it just feels like it's difficult to read silhouette wise. And she's in that pose for quite a number of frames, which is not ideal. My biggest, my biggest, um, concern is this hand here. It just feels like you didn't know where to put it. So you stick it, stick it up there so it could be visible. You might need to consider a bigger change to the pose in order to make a really good dynamic one that's got a really great silhouette. Ideally, what you want to do is make sure that limbs aren't stacking on top of one another in silhouette because that's when it starts to feel like I have no idea what's going on because I can't really discern what the, what the different limbs are doing because they just get blended into the one singular block of silhouette. So yeah, you might want to consider reconsider this pose. I would imagine it could be a good thing to uh, to do. Um, <clears throat> this whole final moment is another missed opportunity. Uh, I've already mentioned this. This is before the final pose. She does, does this really cool flourish at the end. Um, I think I would have done something. I mean, you could have played this up a little bit, I think, to really make this whole ending feel great. A, how can we make this more cruel? How can we add to the cruelty of this moment? Um, would be one thing and how do we extend it out a little bit so we can really appreciate it and sort of celebrate it a little bit more it happens kind of fast um, I added a little note here is like imagine just for fun and this is a stupid idea probably but imagine you know she's got like this beating heart but it's not a heart it's like a little cube because obviously she just cut through this big block this cube like block maybe we have like a, a block heart that's kind of throbbing on our sword and maybe she sort of takes it like her blade and swipes it like this to let the let the heart fall off like as if you're taking like a piece of meat off of a skewer and it drops down and then she just slams her foot and like and she's like if she's putting out a cigarette she just sort of mashes it into the ground something something small like this is going to communicate what you're asking for it's something that goes beyond the default this i've seen this a million times this typical i'm i'm spraying the blood off of the, the of the sword moment or i'm flicking the sword um it's cool but it's a little overdone and it certainly doesn't say cruel at all it just says cold and precise very samurai um but yeah there's nothing nothing specifically cruel about that so you know you could come up with many many other really awesome ideas here to do uh to play into that that sort of that tone um let's see uh next one here is i just wanted to point out that i really really love this the, the leg muscle jiggle you know when you when you when she flicks like this you really feel those legs kind of bounce a little bit, um, which is makes a lot of sense because she's doing such a quick, very, very quick, abrupt motion that comes to a very, very sudden stop. I would expect her body to kind of wiggle a little bit like that. I think that really, really is awesome. That little detail feels very good. 
Um, the last note I have here is uh, the, the final pose is very default again. So anyways, I'm just repeating myself at this point um, is, you know, what, whatever she does at the end. It'd be nice if she ends up in the same kind of cruel pose that she started in. I don't know what that might be, but um, you could have fun with it beforehand, like I was saying here, and just transition properly into that idol after she does whatever she's going to do here. Now, I mean, to just wrap up things, because I think I'm just at around the 15 minute mark right now, um, I would say... The other thing, like, I don't, I, I don't know how you'd make these other actions more cruel, to be honest. I mean, it's hard, like an action is, it's hard for actions to be cruel unless you could take the time to do something very personal, which is why I was looking for that one little moment to maybe extend out, to turn it into something a little bit more um, elaborate, a little bit, you know, communicating something other than just a stab, this moment right here. Um, it's the only one that kind of hangs out long enough for us to, to really do anything with, in my opinion. Um, cause the other thing you have to keep in mind is if this is, is a combo attack sequence, these little moments here, right? Like this is like, that's a window period for the player to press the button again for the, for the character to do another attack. Or maybe they don't, maybe they just hit the jump button or do something else. They didn't, they don't have to do another attack, but if they do want to chain into like another, another beat of the attack, <clears throat> this would be where they hit the, the attack button is in this little small window here. So there's not, it's hard to do anything there because during those windows, it, it should feel like the character is waiting for the player almost, you know, it's just staying in this really cool pose. That's perfectly, um, poised for launching into the next attack it's hard to really squeeze personality into that in my opinion you could maybe the poses like you, you could end up in less graphic poses and whatever you decide to do for the idols maybe you could bring a little bit of that into here like if you decide to have her all like this kind of stuff you know like almost like a witch contorted um then you know maybe in these poses you try to show a little of that flavor in these small held poses that could be something you could do but um you know i think it's a bit of a stretch because there's, it's hard there's not they're not very long moments but you could try it you could try it if you're if you're really going for gold here and you really want to make sure you double down on the the cruel feeling that could be a way to go so yeah Hopefully this was helpful. I, I mean, these are the kind of reviews that I dread, like I said, because it's very, a very, very nice looking animation. Um, I I really, really enjoyed looking at it. It's got so much personality. The camera is cool. Like, honestly, the only thing I can fault you on, like, up front, and that's very obvious, are those that that the opening pose and the closing pose. Those are the those are the ones that should be very, very obvious uh, that we can we can jump on. The other stuff in, in in my in my comments here are probably, you know, they're 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 subjective as everything is when it comes to animation feedback. But yeah, so hopefully it's useful. It's, this is all useful. And um, yeah, I, I, maybe I, I've got the feeling that what, what you're really looking for was just a second set of eyes um, to kind of, you know, f take a fresh look at this and tell you where you could sort of improve and what things you might want to consider adding. So please let me know if it was helpful. You have my email. Um, you can email me back and, um, and uh, let me know if there's anything unclear. Um, and um, hopefully um, that uh, things were at least a little bit helpful. See you around, hopefully. Hope to, hope to see your work back in my, uh, my to-do list because uh, I, I really enjoyed this one. Take care. Bye.